Thank you very much. It's panic stations, but we're back in the commentary box, ready to go for the O'Neill Senior Football Championship final. Glenn, the reigning champions, looking for three in a row, taking on Maharafelt. And if we have half as good of excitement as we had in the intermediate, we'll not complain. Joining me on this one will be Paul McFlynn. But we'll run through the two teams that are out on the park preparations. Threw in a little disarray for both of those. We'll start with the Glen team. It does show one change from the side that is listed on your screen. And it's little surprise that in comes Danny McDermott to replace Alex Doherty at number 13. So 21 will come in for 13 on the Glen side in the, the starting line out. So they will line out with Conlon Bradley between the posts. The full back line of Michael Warnock, Ryan Dugan, and Connor Carvel. The half back line, Eunan Mulholland, Kieran McFall, and the other of the Mulholland family, Cahill, will uh, wear number seven. The midfield pairing is Connor Glass and Emmett Bradley. The half forward line, Ethan Doherty, Jack Doherty, the two brothers, along with Connor Convery. The full forward line now will read wearing number 21. Danny McDermott and Danny Tallon, the two Dannys in the full forward line, and Conliff McGuckian make up the Glen side. Managed by Maliki O'Rourke, looking for their third successive title. They won their first one two years ago. They backed it up last year. Now the aim for three in a row. Standing in the way is the 2019 champions, Marafelt, the Rossa men defeating Glen here in 2019 by the narrowest of margins. Their team managers is Damien Barton and Brian McGuckin, and their team also shows one change from the side listed in your match programme. And that is also in the corner forward position. Number 15, Ryan Ferris, has been replaced by Ronan Walls. 23 in for 15 on the Maharafelt side. So they will line out with the county goalkeeper, Oren Lynch, between the posts. Full back line of Simon McElean, Johnny McElean, and Giuseppe Lepari. The half back line. Conor McCluskey, Owen McAvoy and Conal Hearn. The midfield pairing is Danny Hevern and Dan Higgins. The half forward line Shane McGuckin, Ryan Lennox and Paddy McLarnan. And the full forward line Cormac Murphy Shane Hevern and wearing number 23 is Ronan Walls. Our match official is Benny Quinn from Ban the Screen. He is in the centre of the park along with his officials. Two old pairs and the two lines people but more importantly to my right hand side with the mic in the hand is Paul McFlynn. Paul firstly congratulations on yet another success on Friday night with Loops Thirds Reserve Championship winners. I'm sure a lovely feeling to get your hands on yet another title but what a game we have in store here. Glenn against Marathon. Absolutely Alan I think from the start of the year when you know we're looking at potential finalists I mean we we're talking about Slock Neil, Glenn and Mocker Felt has been the top three in Derry and as it turns out, Slock Neil made that semi-final against Glen, and here we have what people would consider to be the top two. Um, both teams carried good form through the group stages, albeit people are thinking that maybe Glen haven't hit the heights that they've done in previous years. But if you cast your mind back to 12 months ago, they were in the same sort of position, coming into a final, and people were tipping Slock Neil for that final. Glen peaked that day, went on to win Ulster, and narrowly lost out in an All-Ireland club final. Mucker felt felt they haven't got back up since 2020 and they're, they're in another final and they've felt they've underachieved really the last couple of years so look we're all looking forward to this one and I think it'll be a fascinating clash. They're lined up they're marching behind the Column Kill pipe band I suppose nerves will be in among the both camps, not helped by the delay with the intermediate going to extra time. I suppose preparations were true into disarray a little bit. All your planning goes out the window. It ch changes things a little bit. I suppose the opening 10 minutes will see how how either side cope with that. Which of them cope with the best, Paul? Yeah, it, it does be unset, and especially the way things are now. I mean, everything's planned to the last minute, the last tee, you know. And in terms of people were saying to me when I was watching the intermediate the final there, down in the crowd ones were saying, oh, this game will still go ahead at 3.30, this is not a chance because, I mean, both teams will have planned for when they hit the pitch what they're doing, you can't expect that so everything, you know, that's part of the preparation you want to give them the best prep, it's unfortunate it's been delayed, but I think listen, no one both camps that have planned this that have said, look, there's not a good final, this could go to extra time, what what if what if that happens, what do we do, so you're both very experienced managers, Malik Rourke and, and Damien Barton, and both backroom teams very experienced so look, they'll have, they'll have factored all that in, and, and and we'll see. I think we'll be in for a, a very 
tactical, tactical battle, I think, all over the pitch here, and it'll be interesting to see who picks up who. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about, is yeah. the matchups. I spoke to Mal McMullen before either game, and he was talking about matchups, and a lot of people have said Conor McCluskey's going to pick up Ethan Doherty, who is on like vibes, probably going to go midfield. Ryan Dugan's going to put, maybe pick up Shane Heavern. There's going to be so many different matchups. I suppose we'll not know until in five, ten minutes of this game. We'll not, we'll have to keep our eyes peeled as best we can here for the viewers, but I suspect, that first of all, that Conor McCluskey will pick up Ethan Doherty. I mean, they, they marked each other in last year's quarter final, and they literally did cancel each other out in, in, in that regard. Um, also, I think Owen McAvoy at centre half back. I'm not so sure they'll play Danny Heaver in midfield. There's a serious height advantage there in terms of Connor Glass and, and Emmett Bradley. And if Danny does stay in the middle of the field, there's no doubt Glenn will target that. So I would be surprised if Owen McAvoy doesn't go to midfield. Well, the time will tell as both teams line up. We're going to have a minute silence first, of course, for the late lame people who passed away last weekend. And our deepest sympathy to the family and friends of the late Liam Peoples. A large crowd here in Celtic Park for this one as we now pause for Ara Naveen which will be sung by Slot Neal's Catherine Nemola who will be about to get us underway with Ara Naveen and Martha line up beating finalists the last time in the final back in 2020 but we pause for Ara Naveen back but you would feel Paul McFlynn three in a row is extra special look it is Alan go through, down through the history books there's many a team have tried the three in a row and failed um, and those special teams that have done it you know the Balahis and Ballanderis uh, Slock Neil have been there they did four in a row so you know Glenn will be seeing this and whilst Malachy will have tried to curtail all type of talk about three in a row and knowing his psychology it will be it's one game we win they know the big prize and, and the history that's at stake in that and look I mean it is hard to do and that's a question mark that probably that people outside the camp will be hanging over again can they go and do what they've done over the past two years well the scene is set Benny Quinn has the ball in the hand his first senior final since 2016 he's back the man in the middle for the big occasion a large crowd here Paul they're in sitting they're waiting they're in anticipation of what we feel could be a ding dong tussle it could be a dog fight or it could be an open game but it's more likely going to be a dog fight yeah I suspect so I mean there's a slight breeze uh, going down towards the Brandywell end there and Glenn have that slight breeze in the first half interestingly Jack Doherty who lines out at centre half forwards away to corner forward and Owen McAvoy's followed him with Collins McGuckin going to centre half forward so there's one and tactical switch already McCluskey's gone to Ethan Doherty as expected and the ball is up and we're underway and it's Conliff McGuckey in first into possession for Glenn back to Kieran McFall missed last year's final of course back in the green and gold of Glenn as he comes forward here does McFall was player of the match when they won it the first year good ball in there to Danny Tallon Danny Tallon trying to get away there from the full back but he plays it over now to Ethan Doherty tracked over there by McCluskey coming off his shoulders Eunan Mulholland Mulholland in possession plays it right back here to Spike Michael Warnock and you would feel that if a team can get ahead they will be hard to peg back here a couple of points three four points ahead Paul it's going to be difficult for either team to peg them back as all the bodies is back into defence here's a chance though for Jack Doherty tracked by Owen McAvoy back out now to McFall he's got Danny Tallon but McFall's going to go himself but that's going to come in that's a super start Kieran McFall with a splendid point for Glenn 
it's reminiscent from um, uh, two years ago uh, when they beat Slock Neil in their first final. McFall was very much to the fore in that half, and he's, he's very he started. He's at three or four touches already. Great score, and I think he maybe kicked the first point that day. So, look, patient by Glenn, very patient. So the first kick out of the afternoon, and it comes for the county man, Oren Lynch. Dan Higgins did make the run, but Oren decides not to use him. He's just delaying it as Glenn have pushed up on this one. Going away over to the far side, but it's well kept in over there, but it's very close to the sideline. Ball into the middle, but the old Emmett Bradley putting them under pressure there, but it's going to be a free out for Glenn. You can see the press from Glenn in the early stages, Paul. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a thing that people have been talking about, the, the, the impact uh, that Owen Lynch can have, because he does come out a lot more than Colin Bradley will come out and create that extra man, so you can see a definite press by Glenn there in that kick. So, we're looking back in the other end of the field and just pick, see who's picking up Shane Heaver, and it is Ryan Dugans to Shane Heaver playing on the square. But here's Danny, his brother, his older brother in possession, gives it over now to Oren Lynch, spreads it over here now to Johnny McElean. Johnny in possession for the Rossa men. Looking for their first title since 2019. It was a long wait until they got their hands on that title and they made the breakthrough. But they failed to carry on from that. Slot Neil won it the following year, beating Marlefeld in Balahi. And then, of course, the, pre the last two years, it has belonged to the Wadi Grahams in Glen. So the Rossa men trying to get back on the, the top step at the moment. They're coming forward in possession, but Glen have the bodies back. But Maher felt they'll be patient, they'll be like Glenn, they'll wait the opportunity. Simon McElean goes across the field. Orrin Bradley, or Orrin Lynch, apologies, makes himself available. And in possession again as Simon still holds it. Danny Heaver comes deep. And it's going to be patient. They're going to have to wait the openings and wait the movement, but Glenn seem to have the pockets closed off at the moment, Paul. Yeah, I mean... And look, both teams are going to be very comfortable in the ball and they're just waiting for an opening. They're waiting for that mismatch that they're looking for. But look, both teams will have their homework done to within an inch well, of indeed. each other. They know each other inside out. So we're not surprised it'll start like this. Markerfeld will not want to give this ball away. If Glenn turn it over, it'll be a big boost psychologically. So they're just keeping it. They but are. at this stage, it's not, it's not dangerous. No, nope, not at the moment. But Cormac Murphy in possession has been one of the stars for Markerfeld all year. Both these teams came to this stage unbeaten. <coughs> came through the group games unbeaten top their groups Mara felt just drawing their last game otherwise it would have been a 100% record Mar Glenn won all of their games Dan Higgins holds off the challenge of Emmett Bradley the referee says it's gone back for a free so it's a foul and a chance for Mara felt just outside the 45 metre line directly in front of the post and a chance for the Rasa men to possibly open their account but it's not the easiest one and Shane Heavern has elected to leave it and he's leaving it here for Shane McGuckin, who's going to place it on the ground exactly on the 45 metre line. So Shane McGuckin is a big, big kick for your first kick. It's not one you, that's not one you envisage when you're doing the, the mental prep, you're figuring one from 25 yards out, but it's a big kick. It's a big one for young Shane McGuckin as he comes forward from the 45. He's got a very good connection. He's got it very good indeed because of sail between the posts. No difficulty at all for McGuckin on the sides are level. Big kick. Huge confidence booster for Shea. I mean, that goes over 45 yards out against a slight breeze. That's a big boost. So the first kick out for Conlon Bradley finds Danny McDermott who makes the mark and breaks away. He's not, not content and not happy to take a mark. He's more for, worried about getting forward but he's given possession away but it slips through the hands there of Dan Higgins. Breaks out here now. When Danny Tallon was there to pick it up, Connor Glass, his first touch of the afternoon as he goes across field and spreads it away across to his team captain Connor Carvel who gathers possession after the bounce and now he's to Conlon McGuckin. McGuckin tries to cut in wee McCucky and he's found a little bit of space here he's got outside him is uh, team captain Carvel into now Connor, 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 Connor Convery Convery back out to Carvel again but Convery had the opportunity but it was an acute angle now with the point scorer for Glenn already is McFall McFall lays it off and Glenn just been pushed out again Wait, the opportunity is to spread away over here now to Ewan Mulholland. Took a wicked bounce, but Mulholland dealt with it well. And he's going past his man, Mulholland can kick a score. He fancies his chances as a good score from Ewan Mulholland with the point. Great score off his weaker foot too. He just knew the opening was there. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation. He dropped the shoulder and he's confident enough to put it in his left. And the defender was just a couple of yards off him and he's very accurate. So the kick out finds McAvoy, Glenn back in front, two points to one, early stages of this O'Neill Senior Football Championship final. 
And if you missed it, where were you were? But the intermediate was won by Glen Ullin, back to back intermediate champions in Derry. So Glen Glen make it three in a row here. Will it be a day for the green and gold like it was here last year? Glen Ullin won the intermediate on the same day as Glen made it back to back titles. Oren Lynch across to McAvoy. McAvoy comes forward for Glen, or for Mahara Felt. Coming off the sideline is Shea McGuckin who hit that wonderful free from the 45 metre line for the Rossa men. Now to Oren Lynch. Oren Lynch, he know he can kick points if it comes to the bit. And coming over to the far side, Cormac Murphy cuts in and he's got pace here, Murphy, but his, his angles has been cut out there by Danny Tallon. So Murphy has to come back out again for the Rossa men. And he does so. Way back out to Danny Heaver. Heaver outside the 45 metre line. Danny comes across the field. Turns back. Connor Glass was following him to Simon McArlean. Now to Giuseppe Lapari. Lapari for the Rossa men coming forward. But this patient again, like we saw with their first score. And they're content on that. And both teams will be content at passing the ball around until the opportunity arises. It'll be no pot shots for luck. It'll be created and opened up before they have that go. Danny, Dan Higgins. Over to McAvoy again. Much the same we saw from Marfelt. In the f that created the first score, and we're seeing it again, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's no such thing as taking a real risk here and giving the ball away. They're just trying to find small pockets where there's a slight opening to get a kick away. Dan but Higgins. it's proven very difficult. Higgins was quickly closed off there. Gets it over to Lapari, though. Cormac Murphy put under pressure. Gets away from the challenge, though. Fists it inside to Heaver. Dan. Danny back out again to Simon McAlean. Slipped through the hands, but there's plenty of time to give it back to Oren Lynch. Across again now to Johnny McAlean. Bit of space for McAvoy over here. McAvoy. Oh, lovely pass inside. Just took a lick it. Bounce there and a chance for Ronan Walls, but Walls gets that one totally wrong because everything up to it was perfect apart from the finish, Paul McFlynn. Yeah, you could just see Owen McAvoy and look, that's just one of those wee pop passes inside and it was created the opening. I don't know... I wonder was Owen inside the 45 when he hit it I wonder was he going to take the mark perhaps Owen was inside the 45 when he kicked it but he rushed it he had more time Rowan so Rowan Walls with the first missed opportunity but this is good play from Glenn now combining there was Ethan Doherty and Eunan Mulholland breaks away from the challenge Mulholland going through the centre might think of a goal here but a wonderful tackle superb tackle coming in there from Connell Heron when it looked like goal was on for Mulholland Colin Heron with a superb tackle Paul McFlynn oh absolutely but what a run from Eunan Mulholland what a run 45-50 yards and just about to pull the trigger what a textbook tackle absolute fantastic you talk about chasing the lost cause I thought it was a goal. he should have maybe perhaps tapped it over the bar but he saw it it opened up for him it opened up but Connell Heron with a last ditch tackle it's the early stages but that could be a match winner in the ninth minute of this game a superb ch challenge from Heron to deny Eunan Mulholland as here comes Oren Lynch coming back to Johnny McAlean again nine minutes on the clock two points to one in favour of Glenn as you see in the scoreboard if you're wondering why you were late, it was because the first game went to extra time, the intermediate, so throwing time here was delayed. As Mahara felt patiently in possession yet again. Back to Lynch. Glenn with all the bodies back inside their own 65 metre line. As Oren Lynch looks for movement ahead. I'm just looking at Spike off camera sitting in that little pocket in front of the forwards. Ryan Lennox seems to be operating in around the square as well. Tracked back there by Conniff McGuckian, but here's Oh, and McAvoy in possession at the moment lays it off and back again that opportunity had gone a begging back out to Danny Heaver Daniel with the opportunity to spread it across here now to McGuckey McGuckin Shea McGuckin a little pop fist pass into Cormac Murphy who curls it over the bar so pair point from Cormac Murphy super score you could see it coming I see the Glen ones talking to each other about who was doing what in terms of the sweeper but the sweeper was sitting there but redundant really didn't pick up the run great run by Cormac across the pitch and an excellent score so Cormac Murphy's first of the afternoon levels it up at two points apiece in the tenth minute as Conor Bradley goes long this time looking for Conor Glass who's got Danny Heaver climbing over his back so it's going to be a free here to Glen between the 45 and the 65 metre line Cahill Doherty just tells Benny here I've got this, you can move on into another position and Cahill will mark the spot of where the free is and Connor goes back here to Cahill Mulholland we talk about Mulholland's we 
So well done to Brona, who was running the Dublin Marathon this morning, along with Joanne McKenna. So congratulations to them to possibly tuned our way from Dublin this afternoon, or maybe, maybe making their way up the road back to Derry. No, oh, Brona, she'll not want to miss. Well, I think, I, I, think me watching it I think I don't know if she's watching it or not. I know Joanne will watch it, and her husband Ronan and the backroom team as well for Glenn. So they'll be Joanne will watch it, and she'll probably feed it through to Bruno. <laughs> she can't watch them. So here McFall in possession over on the far side. I know we have a lot of people all out throughout the world. Someone getting up at the crack of dawn this morning to watch this one. Might have been happy with the little delay, giving them an extra half an hour in the bed. But Glenn in possession now of Connor McGuckey and cutting in. McGuckey in with the effort. This one sails to the wrong side though. And out and wide of the target. So we've had one wide apiece and that's two points apiece. Just taking time to settle into it. And the contest beginning to settle into it. This the prize on offer, the John McLaughlin Cup. And the pride of being Derry champions for 2023. That's Oren Lynch comes soloing out. Giuseppe Lapari takes the ball off him. And the build from the back again. Paddy McLaren comes deep to gather possession. And now is racing upfield. Been tracked back there by Eunan Mulholland, but Paddy gets the ball back here to Danny Hebron. Danny seems to be the playmaker. He's, he's going to sit around that middle of the field at the back. Yeah, interesting. He went and took the short kick there, and Connor was out the pitch. He seems to be on Connor Glass. They've left that, but you can see the, the disadvantage early here for when Connor went up Danny was all over him it was a free but interestingly then Danny picks up the short kick at the edge of the and Connor doesn't follow him so obviously they're, they, Orton Lynch doesn't want to kick it out on top of Emmett or, or Connor so they're going to opt for shorts well, Orton Lynch has opened up a little bit for him here he lays it off to the far side to Danny Haven the aforementioned Danny Dan Higgins now comes into it back to Lynch again but again that opportunity just Nothing availed from that little bust of attack. So the rebuild again does the Rossamen. Giuseppe Lapari, a little bit of space here for Lapari. Not interested in having a go though. Gives it out to Shane McCuckin. Now to Heaver. Shane, that is. The brother of Danny. Back to Lapari again. This is good play from Marafelt holding possession, but good play also from Glenn cutting off any avenues. But we see already where Marafelt can hold possession and then find that little putt pass into space. As we spread it across to the other side, and the packed stand, seated stand on the far side in your back picture of that. That's Danny Heaver in possession for the Rasa men. Now with Clucky, Conor McCluskey coming forward. And coming in from the far side is Murphy and here's old McAvoy going through the centre. McAvoy to put Marrow Felt in front and old McAvoy does exactly that. Good play again. They're very patient and they have created opportunities on each occasion, Paul. Yes, and, and interestingly, Glenn aren't really getting hands on around that 45. It's very much Shepard and pushing them out. And that's allowing Macrafelt to be quite comfortable in the ball and pick those pockets. So they are being very patient and make excellent use of the ball. Bradley goes long again looking for Connor Glass, but he can only knock it down. That was picked up by Macrafelt. They've got their noses in front for the first time. And I've now got possession back, and they take a lot of heart from that overturning that one. But you can see Conor Bradley looking for Conor Glass. You mentioned the aerial duo himself and Danny Hebern. It's no match, although Conor couldn't hold on to that one, Paul. No, he got, he, Daddy did well. He got the break on and they picked up the break. But it's quite said before the game, Oren Lynch has created an overlap. You know, he, he's been involved in two of those scores around that sort of 45 area, whereas Conlon doesn't seem to do that. And yet that does create that extra man and that extra space so uh, Mackerfeld are using him extremely well and he's got more and more comfortable Orn as the years have went on it's something in his game that he's you see him now as a real threat he's in possession at the moment and he plays the pass in here to Clucky Clucky has a goal but this one sails away to the wrong side and again it was right. him yep. he passed that to, to Connor. Connor was closed down pretty well there but the chance was created with by Orn Lynch so three points to two in favour of Maharfield as Colin Bradley gets ready to kick this one out. And he plays it away out here now for the run of Michael Warnock, but he'll not keep that one in play. Down below us, he runs into the advertising board, and the ball is put out by Euro Mulholl. The sideline ball taken there by Ryan Lennox for Maharfield to have possession back again. And Glenn haven't scored since the sixth minute, and we're now in the 16th. So 10 minutes without a score for Glenn, who led by two points to one. So the last two scores coming from 
Maher Afel. You have created the better opportunities from each attack so far. And as Paul mentioned, Oren Lynch has been involved in creating that extra man. And here he comes yet again for Maher Afel in possession. And plays, ticks in two men and then lays it off out the back door. And an opportunity to go straight through the centre here for Lepardi. He goes down under the challenge. Fouled again and again. You mentioned it, Paul. Oren Lynch was involved. He, he took in two Glenman, <coughs> left the space for Lepardi to run into, and they've paid dividends. Yeah, I mean, he, he's been, you know, you'd have to say quite adventurous. If there's a, maybe there's a more appropriate word, but in, her, in terms of, like, he saw a pocket of space there. Connor Glass was the closest to him, but he sucked in two Glenman, run around the back, cutting in behind number four, Giuseppe Lepardi. Great run and a free. He went for it. The space is there, and actually, where, where Glen are sitting, their sweeper. We're Glenn's sweepers at in round that edge of the D. Sometimes it's it's Michael Warnock, sometimes it's Kieran McFall. I think they need to be further out. You know, they need to be pushed out a wee bit in the tackle. By like the time Gl Mackerfeld aren't going in there. And they're certainly not going to kick the ball down their throat. They're too experienced. Three in a row for Maharafelt. The latest that free from Shane Hayward. And Gl Maharafelt lead by four points to two in the 17th minute of this opening half. And it's just like Spaghetti Junction here in the middle. There's all sorts of runs and pulling and dragging and so the kick out, this time over to the far side and is picked out on the far side by Conniff McGuckian. McGuckian coming up against Simon McArlane, trying to go past Simon, but there's another Marafet man coming in there to put in the challenge, but Conniff holds off both of them. And Glenn, as I said, haven't scored since the sixth minute. We'll need a score again. As Kieran McFall drops this one in, but it's over the top and there's plenty of bodies back there and one of them is Shane McGuckian. And McGuckian clears it up for Maharafat who are looking quite comfortable at the moment is the Rasa men came in here nearly roped off by the bookies which was strange for anyone that has watched the Derry Championship this year it was strange to see the betting odds against Maharafat to be honest but I don't think many in Derry paid much heed on them because it was really they were writing them off Paul and it was dangerous writing this Marafelt side off yeah well I mean someone referenced I saw it on Twitter or some reference to the bookies I didn't see the odds but I heard they were crazy I mean you get into this game I think most people would have maybe had Glenn's slight favourites on the fact that they were going for three in a row but we know the calibre of this Marafelt team I mean to me having watched them this year they certainly are much more methodical if, if there's such in terms of what they do in terms of deliberate and I think we're seeing that already in terms of how you're sticking to the game plan are they're doing their game plan and it's working for them at the moment as the challenge just comes in with that no the referee says to play on and Glenn have turned this one over and Connor Glass would have been happy to continue but he lets the ball forward here now to Danny Tanner but it's just too much on it it's a race for possession but the referee's going back oh going Orrin back. Lynch is down Orrin Lynch is down Orrin Lynch yep. he is down he's off the ball there on the far side the Maharfelt crowd there he pulled up look behind the goals and this could be a massive blow off camera Orrin Lynch has pulled up he close looks to, to go the sideline. <sighs> that didn't look good, Paul. It did not look good at he's all. He's receiving treatment over there, and it'll be interesting to see because he's off the field, but he, he's getting back on it. But he's hobbling very, very badly. Is Orrin Lynch? I think it's a hamstring. And Orrin Lynch now he, he's smart. He got back on the field. He had to get he back on the pitch, yeah. Yeah, because otherwise the referee could have played on. <laughs> but he's back on the field now. But it's not looking good. And it looks like his left Marfa. leg, which is perhaps fine for kickouts, but for the way he plays coming up and down that pitch, that is going to be a serious setback uh, for Mackerfeld, but we hope Warren is able to get up and continue, maybe it's just a cramp hopefully, but it looked he sprinted for that ball out to that side, which when you look at it he didn't actually need to do because the play he's up. He's back on his feet, he hobbles back towards the goal plenty of red and white, as you'll see Mackerfeld here in force behind the goals now that Oren Lynch is hobbling back towards it's a ball forward here it's a race for possession between Dan Higgins and Emmett Bradley Emmett Bradley wins it Emmett on to the left foot watches this one yeah, Maher Felt say it's wide the umpire says it's a point it's wide. North wide. It's wide. the referee Benny Quinn says yep yeah, it is a wide they weren't too sure there Paul well the, the Glen players didn't give out that much it must have been a fairly tight call so I mean they didn't they didn't seem that animated but Owen Lynch does not look good no, this is going to be a tester for him now. This kick out. It's his left leg. Looks like his left calf or left hamstring. But it's, it? it's what it's going to do to Markerfeld's game plan and, and tactical strategy and how important he's been in, in three of those scores already. So Aaron Lynch, his first test since picking up that injury. Markerfeld 
Are struggling to get this one out, Danny but they find again. a way out again. Danny Heaver, as you mentioned, Paul, wins the possession. Referee playing the advantage here, but Marfan will not need the advantage, and I'm sure Orrin Lynch will not oh, want the ball back him. there. But he spreads it out to the side, so it'll be interesting to see how Orrin gets on in the next five minutes or so. We'll keep an eye on him. But here at the moment is Marfan, who lead by four points to two, coming forward with Johnny McAleen down in front of us. Johnny turns on the brakes when he gets to the 65 and goes across the field with a pass over to Danny Hebert who's been the dictator he's telling Oren Lynch to come forward but Oren is in no mood to get involved yet Paul No and it's almost as if though Connor Glass is sitting off Danny Hebert there looking almost trying to cut out the threat and here's another free in if this one doesn't go over but he doesn't need it because the referee was playing the advantage but Paddy McLaren pops it over and it's four in a row for Maher and Paddy McLaren with the point and suddenly it's a three point game and Maher very good value for that three point lead Paul absolutely I mean we can say Glenn haven't got going but they haven't been allowed to get going the kick out here and Conniff McGuckin has won quite a few kick outs so far he takes yeah, this one they're certainly targeting along him. the sideline now looking for Ian and Mulholland Mulholland under pressure though good challenge again from Conal Hearn he denied him a goal and he's denied him getting in there again good challenge from Hearn and Marafant have turned it over again and Owen McAvoy gives it back to Oren Lynch who doesn't want to leave those goals at the moment no, I'd say that they'd be keen to get him in at half time, maybe get him strapped up and, and see and, and knowing Oren, um, he'll, he'll want to continue and play through the pain barrier, but at you the minute he does not look comfortable. You feel his effect of coming out the field's over though? I th absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's just a matter of the kick outs and staying in between the posts at the moment. So but Marafat at the moment are calling all the shots here. And the lead by five points to two and they're coming forward yet again. Inside the last ten minutes of the opening half. Cormac Murphy in possession, cuts inside, but he gives the opportunity there for Conor Glass to get the challenge in, but Murphy wins it back. Another free in if Murphy doesn't pop this one over. They might be taking the goal. Shane Hebron going through. Goal chance, but he pops it over the bar. Come back off the upright. Will the referee go back for the free? Not on this occasion. He says it goes back out to Hebron again. Hebron with the effort, but it's wide this time. They would have been happy with the free when it goes back to him, but there was a chance it's, of a goal. It's oh. something, and I know Benny's f following the rules, and he's, he's doing a great job here thus far, but it's to me something in the game leads looked at. That should have been a free in. Mackerfeld would have preferred that free. Edge of the eight was a score. It goes on five seconds. Not a chance of score. You don't get the there's no advantage. There's no advantage. In front of Emmett. Close out of the sideline again. Close to the sideline. Can his brother Emmett keep it in play? Just out. I think he did. The referee or the linesman says he did. But then that's a good win in the battle there. Unimal Holland wins the race for this one. Conan Hearn has got the better of him on the last two occasions. Plays it in now to Connor Glass. Connor Glass looks to get support. Gets it back out here. As they try to work their way through. Unimal Holland with the right foot. And that one sails between the posts from Unimal Holland. His second of the day. And a much needed score for Glenn. The first since the sixth minute. And Mocker felt to be disappointed with that. Connell Hearn, to me, had a chance to pick that up. Unimal, he sort of hesitated slightly. He thought he was going to get it. But Unimal never in there and look, that's a great battle I mean that's been the battle of the day thus far between those two very much 50-50 and a fascinating contest but look Conliff McGuckian has been you know he's picked up two or three kicks there he seems to be the only outlet that Glenn have on the kicks and, and Emmett Bradley chased the lost cause not one many's other man would have let that go but he chased it and then we've had two point game the kick out round the centre Emmett Bradley gets the knockdown picked up by Conor Convery Mulholland again. Now Jack Doherty has a bit of space. Jack Doherty turning on the afterburners, going forward, but loses possession. Has he a chance to win it back? He does so. He's got support outside him if he needs it with his brother Ethan. Ethan has it. Two points between the sides. Ethan Doherty close to the sideline. Jack Doherty, his brother, comes to help him. Jack has got Connor Carvel inside, which he get, uses. Connor, half time inside the last. Four, five and a half minutes Ryan Dugan is under pressure referee says he has been fouled by Shane Heaveron and that is going to be a free in and a chance suddenly where Maher felt we're on top suddenly Glenn have a chance to draw to within a point Paul yeah, and I suppose getting back to that previous point <coughs> see if Cormac Murphy had to hit the deck he would have had a free so and um, Ryan Dugan's there very very similar and he was pulled down so you're talking about the subtlety of just stumbling over as opposed to not and the advantage I think it's a rule that you know it's a very very frustrating rule for a forward and you could say well sometimes it works for you and against you but if you look at rugby you come back for the advantage yeah. to me yeah, you've got to look at it game. yeah you got to look at that was a foul so if it doesn't go on and materialise into something more you know, regardless of how long that takes bring it back 
Arne Lynch has been forced off here. And Arne Lynch's afternoon is over for Mahara Felt. He has been replaced by Connor McLarnan. Well, that's who's down at 16. I'm guessing has gone into the bench pole. Do you know the sub goalkeeper better than mine? No, I'm just looking. Um, I, I'm interested to see. To me, it looks like um, Connor Kearns, but Connor, Connor Kearns, Kearns listed as 20. I know he would have a great kick out on him, soccer background. Um, we will try to get confirmation. We'll try to get confirmation from that. Yeah. And here I did on the PA system to, to make sure of who it is. So a chance for Danny Tallant to reduce it to a single point, but he's pulled it to the wrong side. And, oh, no, he hasn't. I was going to say he's pulled it to the wrong side of my... It was close. Out Danny Tallant. It was close. That's but look, no for it's a massive blow. And there you see, um, OK, they got the fifth point when... Warren just got hurt but it has the last couple of attacks there they haven't had that outlet great kick out so we will try to get confirmation of that substitute to make sure we have the right name of who it is but Oren Lynch is definitely out and it's not I can thing. tell you it's not Connor Kearns because Connor Kearns is left footed and the keeper hit that with his right so it possibly is Connor McLaren so five points to four Maher felt lead with half time approaching when they met in the quarterfinals last year Maher felt led by two at the break but it took Stevie O'Hara goal to ignite the Glen men who ran out six point winners in the end but it was much closer than that so McLaren in possession lays it back to Giuseppe Lapari. So two in a row for Glenn after we had four in a row for Maherfeld. So inside the last two and a half minutes of normal time here. As here comes McLaren. And this vital for the Maherfeld. Plan that their goalkeeper is involved and Orrin Lynch was unable to be involved in coming forward again. And Simon McElean as Maherfeld try to create something as Danny Heaver plays it across again to the substitute keeper who spreads it away across to the far side. Maherfeld will be looking to respond immediately with another score here, Paul, but that's, that's going to be a huge blow for Maherfeld because Lynch was so involved and he was dictating the game. Yeah, he was, and I mean, Glenn were struggling to cope with him and, and they'd probably plan for it, but it's very, very difficult. He's so good at it, he's so effective, he's got so much more comfortable on the ball and they play to the system, but look, um, Conor McLaren started very well. He's he's play, he's adopting the same approach. It's not as if he's sitting back. No, well, but I suppose that's what all the nights on the training pitch is for. And here he comes. I suppose during the national foot or national league and, oh! and the championship when they were playing club football without their county man, McLaren was the man that was doing what Oren Lynch has been doing. As Kieran McFall wins a free out there for Glenn, so Glenn will be looking maybe to get back on level terms before the interval. That's it way up on the far side. That's a dangerous ball up along the wing there to Connor Convery. Just gets ahead of Giuseppe Lapari inside him as Unan Mulholland. Two points to his name already as Unan. Does he fancy a third? He watches it and he watches it and he watches it sail between the posts. That's three first half points for Unan Mulholland and the sides are level. Yeah, I mean, listen, he, he's, he's been electric here in, in this first half. And we talked about the battle he was having there with Connell Hearn. But three points from play. I mean, his pace and his ability to be incisive he cuts he drops that shoulder and goes at you he gets a yard at all right or left foot he's having a pop good kick out finds her he plays it inside to Owen McAvoy so the sides level at three point or five points apiece with 30 seconds of normal time and it looked like a one minute that was held up there I just missed it he was taking it off but I think it was one minute of additional time but here comes Danny Heaver and his t fouled. referee says no Gets it back out to his brother Shane. Shane now to si Simon McInerney. Maherfeld will try to create one opportunity before the interval. And it is one additional minute as Simon goes across the field for Maherfeld. Evenly poised here in Celtic Park in this O'Neill Senior Football Championship final. Live on Derry GEA TV and We Are Derry. Five points apiece. Much of what we expected, Paul. It was going to be tight. It was going to be a battle. Yeah, and I mean... I still think Mackerfeld will be really happy. There's a, the, the breeze is picking up, and, and Glenn have been playing with the aid of that breeze in the first half. So, if there's anything in that breeze as an advantage, you know, 
And this fella here has been really on fire is Cormac Murphy. Murphy had a chance himself possibly and Glenn have turned that one over. That'll give them a big lift and can they get their noses in front as they try to break quickly here with Ethan Doherty under pressure though from, from Cor Conor McCluskey trying tackle. to get the pass in there but great work from Conor McCluskey under pressure now as Emmett Bradley referee says that's a free and Maher felt win themselves a free that was danger but Conor McCluskey got back to dispossess Ethan Doherty absolutely fantastic tackle no better man than Conor McCluskey I mean if you're in a sprint with Conor you're in trouble you know and Ethan had the ball I thought he was gone but I mean it's just textbook from, from Conor and, and I mean in terms of the season he's had with the county and I think that's why he'd be picking up his all-star in the next few weeks well that's what we're hoping the referee has played the one additional minute so this is a wee bit extra I'm surprised he didn't actually maybe call half time here with a stoppage and I'm sure both teams would have been pretty happy just ahead for the dressing room and Danny's having a chat with Benny he felt that that tackle was a wee little bit over the top there from Emmett and Benny just explaining here to Danny as you'll see Danny a little nod in agreement but I'm not 100% sure if he's in full agreement but he is not as the ball is spread over to the far side and Benny off camera looks at the watch but he's letting play continue here and no, yeah, that's it it's half time it's level pegging both teams have a little purple patch as Paul Maharavelt started much the brighter led five points to two Glenn will be happy to get back on level terms I suppose both managers looking at back in the first half will be happy with how it doesn't went, maybe, maybe content. Glenn will be content they're back on level terms where they haven't really played that well. Maher felt, as you said, the wind's picking up a little bit. Hard to know which way it's blowing. It's a swirling sort of a breeze. But yeah, looking at the side flags, it could be towards Maher felt in the second half. So it's still all to play for, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in terms of, I mean, Maher felt to me been the better side in, the, in that first half. I think the Owen Lynch factor has been huge. I mean, in, in getting Glenn back into this game. And to be fair, Conor McLaren, since he's come in, has been doing well. But Glenn defensively have coped with the last three or four attacks now. And saying that, Cormac Murphy broke the line two or three times here. And just a last minute, last second pass just didn't go to hand and it was cut out. But look, I think the word you use there is Malachi Rook will be content to get them in now at half time. And look, I'd expect a few changes in terms of you know men going to, to different men i don't know if we'll see any new personnel at half time possibly but macker felt will be happy you know they will be happy and they will they also have guys off the bench so i think for the winner the bench is going to play a big part here in both teams to try this is the, the 15 that are on both sides will not finish this game it'll be the firepower the athleticism the experience coming off the bench in both sides to see who gets over the line but i think this is going to go down to the wire home Right and we could have an hour extra team. time. Well, you heard it first from Paul McFlynn. Time will tell. Don't go anywhere. The second half will be live here on Derry GA TV from Celtic Park. The floodlights are on. The young people of Derry are on the ground and getting the chance to kick it around, which is great to see. Half time in the League Senior Football Championship final. It's Glenn, five points. Maharafel, five points.
she was just a girl she expected the world but it flew away from her reach so she ran away in her sleep dream of para, para, paradise para, para, paradise para, para, paradise every time she closed her No 
Welcome back is Glenn, are back on the park. Matter of fact, they're leaving the dressing room down to our right hand side, so they're en route. And we look around to see if there is any changes in personnel to either team for the second half that is evenly poised as they head in, head out for the second half at five points apiece. And looking around, Paul, I don't see any changes in personnel on the Glenn team anyway. 
And looking now, Maher felt pick up their positions. Of course, they were forced into that change in the first half when they lost their goalkeeper, Oren Lynch, through injury. And he has been replaced by Conor McLaren. A big blow for Maher felt. But what was said at half time is the question from both camps as we prepare to see who is going to get their hands in the John McLaughlin Cup for the second half pot. We saw in the semi final, Maher felt or Glenn come out in the second half and turned the screw on, on Slough Neil. Can they do the same this afternoon? Yeah, I just think of the way this game's going. And I mean, the breeze has picked up here. It just depends, you know. We've seen teams really take advantage of the breeze and utilise it to good effect. And we've seen our teams play much better against it. Glenn will have no problem playing against it. But it's interesting that number 23, we didn't mention that in the first half, but Ronan Walls has been picking up Kieran McFall. And you'd have to say, doing a good job after that first score. He's And he's just tracking his every run and he's trying to curtail the threat of that. So. No real positional changes here either. Both teams as they were in the first half, but I have no doubt after 10 or 15 minutes you'll, you'll see both benches been utilised. And we're underway. As Benny Quinn tried to get the ball back behind the 45, which wasn't an easy job, but Conor Glass is first into possession here for Glenn. And he drives forward, a long fist forward, looking for Danny Tallon in the far corner. Tallon gathers possession, tracked over there by Johnny McAleen. Gives it back out again to Yuna Mulhall. Three points in the first half from Mulhall, the youngest of the brothers here. Now Ethan Darty tracked again by McCluskey everywhere he goes is Ethan Darty. One of them, each of them is taking each other out of the game, you would think. As here comes Glenn as they come forward with Spike. Michael Warnock and Spike can kick a point and he's trying to find a little bit of space here, plays it across here. And a quick fire point from Emmett Bradley, who was caught late, but it's the Maher Feltman that's worst for where. But a good score from Emmett Bradley, Paul. Yeah, great score, and that's his second point. Uh, as well so I mean when you think Union's got three and he's had two from play Union's had three from play and there's been a free from Danny and that's been Glenn's score so a big start look no doubt that's what Malachy or Ruckel have been looking he'll have been telling the boys they're not up to scratch so far Glenn in front six points to five but Marathon have showed they can respond and here they come now it's a strong run here from McLaren a point to his name already fancies a second but he's pulled it to the near post and out and wide of the target. A chance for McLaren to quickly level it up. But it goes to the wrong side and wide. As Conlon Bradley and Glenn, I'm sure was mentioned, to try and get a strong hold. And just looking here off camera, Conor McLaren is out near the 65 metre line. But it's a good kick out to find his brother. Conlon finds Emmett, who kicked the first score of the second half. Emmett, down below us, comes forward here. For Glenn, the reigning champions, looking for three in a row. As we look into the corner to Kieran McFall, who kicked the opening score of the game. Kieran going around the long way, holds off the challenge there of Ronan Walls. Back out here, it comes to Danny McDermott. It's a Pat's Mahara student. Danny going across the field to the other Danny, which is Danny Tallon, that come to meet him. Now it's with Ethan Doherty, as Conor McCluskey, and Ryan Dugan comes forward. He's going to have a go. It's Dugan. This one's dropping. It's a dangerous one. It's knocked in there. It's flipping the ball on. Goes to ground. Referee says no penalty. But it's in the back of the net. It doesn't matter. And is it that man again? Yeah, Holland. Hard. He scored a final in the goal in the final last year. And it's poked, poked into the net. I thought it was a penalty. It looked like the Glen man was shoved to the ground. I was watching that, and it, they got on with it. The referee was saying, get up. It was nothing but Cahill Mulholland toe poked at home. Yeah, reminiscent of last year. Cahill, I think, toe poked home one against uh, Slock Neil, and it came from a high ball. It looked like a penalty, but Benny Quinn waved to play on. The ball spilled. It seemed as if the marker felt everybody sort of stalled and paused. But Cahill was alert and two poked it in. The green flares are lit in Celtic Park. But the questions now. Mahara felt just like they've done in the semi-final against Slot Neil. Glenn have taken control. But Maliki O'Rourke will be hoping that they can build on this because they didn't build on it against Slot Neil. Mahara felt looking to respond immediately. Cormac Murphy was tugged back. This time the referee is going to give the free, but he's going to give it for the second one. Because he was fouled again. And this is in a much more scorable position. And a chance here from Benny Quinn. Just having a stern talk chat there to the Glen Man, which is Michael Warnock. And Michael saying, go back for the first one. But no, nope, he's going back for the second one. And he's going to talk here to Conlough McGuckin. And Conlough looks a little bit bemused. 
I think um, Michael was perhaps lucky enough there. I think he was thinking, was this black card material? It wasn't, but you've always that concern when you're pulling a man back. But look, Cormac Murphy has been causing trouble in the first half, and he had a great cut, cut and run in behind. And look, that'll, they'll ha listen, this will not unsettle Mark or Felt. They're three points down. There's still a bit 28, 29 minutes to go, really, when you count injuries. So, um, but what a start for Glenn. Perfect start to the second half for them. The Guckland's point got over, so it was important for Mahara Felt to hit that first score after the goal. Both teams getting ready to make a change. Tiernan flying, and I saw about to come on for Glenn, but again, Conlon Bradley's kick out very close to the sideline and kept it in play. You know, Holland done so well to keep that one in play. Michael Warnock is caught high there by Conlon Hearn. Warnock gets on the foot quickly up to Connor Class, and he's got a man on his back, which is Danny Heaver, but Glass turns away from him. Heaver is struggling to keep him off on Danny. He went trying to get back on Connor Glass, but he cuts in field and he had the opportunity possibly to have a go there, but there's a man going out the far side and it's in here. There might be another goal chance here coming in, but he couldn't take it. And the opportunity goes a beg in there. Danny for McDermott. And in there is Giuseppe Lapari, but had Danny McDermott taken that one, he was in for goal, but could defend in from Giuseppe Lapari. Yeah, last ditch defend, but what a run from Connor Glass. And I think when he went across field, he was looking for that runner off the shoulder. It didn't come and Macafalt backed off him. And there we have a change of yep. Tiernan Flanagan in for Cahill Mulholland. So Cahill, after scoring the goal, has been taken off, and Tiernan Flanagan is in. That's what happens when you score a goal for Glenn. You're taken off, Paul. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> just hoping we got it right that it was Cahill. It looked as if it was Cahill. He was the one who was doing the most celebrating in terms of coming out. But I thought that the last day, too. Yeah. <laughs> ended up, I think it was Danny McDermott got the touch, but yeah. I think this time it definitely looked like it was Cahill Mulholland. That got the two poke. Now... Maharfelt responded with that point and they have a chance to come forward yet again as McLaren spreads it away over here to Ryan Lennox and as you said they won't panic Maharfelt and they'll keep pushing away as Ronan Walls goes in field plays it across to Simon Markerlane now to Shane Heaver Heaver lays it off to the man coming off his shoulder and he was going to have a go there, but Paddy McLaren elected not to, possibly because he hit a wide earlier on, but Glenn have turned that one over. Taylor Flanagan gets his first touch as Maharafet oh. go in there to try and turn it over, and the boot goes in, that's going to be a free out, as the Glenn man went down to pick it up. Yeah, I mean, looked like Paddy McLaren was going to pull the trigger. He, he stepped back, flicked it back to Sheehan, and, and Sheehan uncharacteristically gave it away. So it's a big lift here for Maharafet. Yeah, absolutely. And the Cairns is in. Missed most of the year through injury, most of the championship, made a substitute appearance against Steelstown, went off injured, missed the semi-final, but he's back again. And and this Ronan, is a Ronan big Walls is away. Ronan Walls is off. So Ronan Walls been replaced there by Connor Cairns. So Connor oh, Cairns in for Ronan again. Walls. And in fairness, Ronan Walls has done a good job. It may be that, you know, I can see Connor Cairns has gone on to Kieran McFall right away and he's given away a free. So obviously he's been sent on for legs to track him. Bruno Walls has done his bit. The GPS is showing that <laughs> it's time for fresh legs. Time for the fresh legs. Glenn Lead, thanks to that goal. We were giving it to Cahill Mulholland. Which we will try to confirm for definite that it was him got the touch, but I think it was. As here the cup with Jack Darty to Michael Warnock. Warnock trying to go around the outside of Ryan Lennox, doing so at the moment, and Warnock still going. Was he pulled back? The referee says, yes, he was danger when Michael Warnock runs at you he's got pace and he has quality to go with it and he gets a high five from Conor Glass as he runs back to his position because it gives a chance for Emmett Bradley to move his side four points clear again Michael Warnock he causes so much havoc when he runs at you Paul yeah and interestingly he wasn't doing that in the first half he was sitting back in that sweeper role and he, his uh, forward uh, forays into the opposition defence has been a highlight of Glenn this year so look it's something that they've got going again here in, in the second half but the minute he gets a yard on you and he, he, he gets one foot in front of you he's going to take your space he's going to cut your line and he cuts in and, and knew the foul was coming smart play so Emma Bradley pops over the free to move Glenn four clear 1-7 to six points and the kick out from McLaren over to this side Emma Bradley gets a touch on that man again coming off McGuckian who's having a very good game indeed, was there for the breaking ball. Conniff has probably had a quiet championship to date, but he's turned up today, Paul. Yeah, he's been, he's, in that first half when Glenn were struggling, he was a real outlet on himself in Unimal Holland, and 
he's getting on breaking ball he's very brave and he he saves his best performances for the big days as he did in last year's Ulster final as well so big game player so Clint trying to put this game to bed in the early stages of the second half as the ball forward to Kieran McFall plays the one two there to Jack Doherty Jack Doherty on to the left but it was a snapshot from Jack hadn't much space and this one out to the wrong side and Tames White yeah and, and you can see a, there's been a you know there's more urgency about Glenn's play here in terms of going forward you can see them a little, little bit more on it and Mackerfeld's kick out they're closing it much more effectively possibly tuned away and it's gone the, again the, the Tyrone County Final is going to extra time Paul for anyone interested in the Tyrone County Final Tyrone like 1-8 Eric Kieran 11 points had finished there so they're away to extra time in Healy Park we had extra time here in the intermediate don't really want extra time in the senior it's beginning to get chilly up here in the crow's nest <laughs> Myself and Paul have had to put our coats on as Ethan Doherty turns Conor McCluskey inside out, but that's not easy, Donald McCluskey. He could turn one way, but he was quickly back turning the other. Absolutely. Conor Carvel now comes forward. As Glenn hold this four point advantage at the moment, one seven to six points, and Conor Bradley comes and leaves his goal for the first time and gives it over now to Spike. Michael Warnock driving forward here for the Waddy Grahams. Making a dash in from the far side was Tiernan Flanagan. And there he gives it to Connor McCookie. And a turn of pace from McCookie. And has he the finish? He has the finish. That's a super point from Connor McCookie. Yeah, we just we just were speaking about him a minute ago. How influential he's been here. And he, he's picked off where he was in the first half. In the first half where a lot of Glen people were Glen players were quiet. But look, they've all upped it in this second half, every single one of them. One player in particular is Michael Warnock. Yeah, absolutely, and, and himself and Connor Glass, Big Emmett, they've all raised the level. You can just imagine what Maliki was saying at half time. That, that will not be how they planned that first half. So look, Maliki can raise the tempo when he needs to raise the tempo, and it, it's clear that it's worked. Five points between the sides now. One eight to six points. Does Maher felt need to find a way back into this contest before it slips away from them? Another beginning to do so. It's no, wide. not with that one. As it tails out and wide of the target. And I think, you know, Danny, very, very accurate. Right. But to me, that's a sign of a little bit of panic. When you're, you know, you wouldn't take that shot. I don't think you'd have taken that shot only in the position they're in. So we've got a panic set in and rushing things. The ball broken down there. And Maher felt have turned that kick out over. Now it's with Cormac Murphy. Cormac Murphy plays it inside, but Michael Warnock read that one. And Warnock gets a strong hand in again. And now gives it off to Kieran McFall. And Glenn good beginning luck, to show, luck, beginning to pour here in hey, hey, hey. Sadlick Park. The big men beginning to stand up in this second half. And they've been much the better side since their emergence from the dressing room for the second period. There are five points a point apiece at the break, but Cahill Mulholland's goal has got them very much in the driving seat now. They lead by five, one eight to six points. And we talked, had the team got a four or five point lead, it was gonna be hard to peg them back, Paul, because Maher felt this, they don't like this. They're gonna to have to kind of leave their comfort zone and push forward, which Glenn can really pay dividends. Yeah, I mean, it's just that, I mean, the end of that first half was a real momentum swinger, I think. We talked about it in terms of Lynch going off, but Glenn have upped the ante here. And we talked that the breeze might be a factor for Mackerfeld, but it's not. Glenn are playing against a slight breeze, really comfortable in the ball, but they've closed down the kick really well. And look, the goal, you say opportunism, but they, they, they created, they took it, and they're very much in the driving seat here. That's a great play from Giuseppe Lapari. They broke up that Glenn attack. He read it well, he got a strong hand in. And here's Connor Cairns coming forward. His first involvement since being introduced as a substitute. Mackerfeld have it back in their hands again, looking to get themselves back into this contest at the end of the third quarter. That has belonged to Glenn. They've outscored their opponents 1 3 to a point in this third quarter so far. Johnny McArnane, Glenn will get the bodies back, try to defend their goal and make Maharfelt work hard to create something. Shane Hebern gets it on to the left, a pot shot from way, way out the field, but it's a pot shot that goes to the wrong side and wide of the target. It's really a hit and hope from there, Paul. Not something like we saw in the first half. Maharfeld were working it, they were patient, but now there's a couple of shots they're just having a go from difficult positions. Yeah, and both shots from more or less from the same position, 45 yards out. And 
to me, a sign of you know trying to force things, a little bit of desperation kicking in. But you'd have to say Ryan Dugan has been doing a really good job and, and Marker Fels Danger Man, Shane Heaven. Danny Tala wins possession from that kick out, wins a free. She throws the ball to Ethan Darty to take quickly, but she does so back to Kieran McFall. McFall skips away from the challenge of Ryan Lennox. And McFall goes towards the stand side here of Celtic Park. Plays it away back to Connor Mc or to Tiernan Flanagan, apologies. Tiernan, of course, spent a little time over in Canada at the beginning of the championship. Uh, down here below us is Conlough McGuckin. Back again to Tiernan. Tiernan in possession. We congratulate Lavi ladies this afternoon who won in the Ulster Club Junior Championship. We've just been told have won their game against Clonmore of Armagh. So they're into the semi-finals. Steelstown, of course, won yesterday in the intermediate. So they're into the semi-final as well. So who will be representing Derry in the Ulster Senior Club Championship? In two weeks' time here against Carrigan. At the moment, it's looking like it could well be the Watty Grahams again, but there's still a long way to go, Paul. We're into the last quarter, but Glenn, they're just looking comfortable at the moment. When Maherfeld are still holding back, they're not prepared to push up, push up on them just yet. You know, it's a bit like we said in the first half that Glenn were doing that, we're allowing Maherfeld to come into that space and no real hands on, and that, look, this is suiting Glenn, really. And no better, they I mean from 1 to 15 in the subs that come in, they have ball players all over. It's a good play there from Jack Doherty. Created the space out now to Conlough McGuckin. McGuckin breaks his way through, McGuckin still going, but he's run into a cul de sac, but he gets the shot away. But it's a weak one. And a straight at Conlon. Conlon McLarnett, Conlon McLarnett. But it was a weak shot from Conlough in the end, but he had to work hard to create that little bit of space, and it's a turnover now, and a chance for. Maherfeld to break away up, but it's given away back here to the goalkeeper. And Maherfeld, five points adrift with 15 minutes to go, will soon have to find the answers to get themselves back into this contest. They've only scored a point so far in the second half. So remember, they had a huge blow losing their goalkeeper, Oren Lynch, during the first half. He was very much involved in helping them build up a five points to one advantage. A five points to two advantage, sorry. Now Cormac Murphy, has been tracked there by Michael Warnock. Of course, is on a yellow card as well. Coming through the centre, Simon McAlean, but it's well read by Jack Doherty. Has been very good in the second half. Plays it over here, and she'll race for possession between Ryan Dugan and Shane Heaver. But the referee says it was a foul on Doogie, and Doogie wins the free. Jack Doherty's been very good in the second half too, Paul. Yeah, he just took the words out of my mouth. I was just going to say that. I think Jack Doherty deserves great mention. First half, maybe not on it as much, but he's been really busy covering the ground. He's a great engine, great ball player. And They've just upped the tempo, haven't they? His defensive duties there. He read that pass perfectly well, cut it out, working so hard. Look, they've just upped it. Yeah, each Glen player, like, they're Every so single one involved of in the yeah. second half. Yeah. Is there a change on the other side? Yes, Maharafat have made a change. They've introduced... No, it's Con Connor Convery. Connor Convery's been replaced, yet yeah. By Judy McDermott. Judy, the brother of Danny. But Maharafat have also made a change. I missed who went off over on the far side, but they have made a change as well. I can I see that one. I, I can't see the number. I can yeah, see the person. Yeah, the long-haired boy in the middle. <laughs> Just trying yes. to work out who he is. I'm trying to get a look at the number here. 25 is yeah, James, James Murray. Murray. Yeah, young James Murray is in, and here's... Michael Warnock again, but it wasn't the best of balls there to Connor Glass, but Glass gets the effort away up, be a super score. That is a wonderful point from Connor Glass. Again, Michael Warnock involved. Ball, I think he's been involved in the last three points. He was yeah. fouled for Emmett Bradley's point. He laid it off for Connor McGuckin and he found the pocket of space to run into to give it to Connor Glass. And interestingly, you know, it's not Conor Murphy's game. He He's marking Cormac, and Cormac hasn't really been tracking him because, from a Markerfeld perspective, that's not what you want, Cormac. But obviously, it's been a decision to try and put him in the back foot, and it's working for Glenn. So it's a six point game now. The reigning champions looking for their third successive title. Lead by six with just over 11 minutes of this game remaining. And Markerfeld are in trouble and looking to find answers. Only a point they have scored in the second half. Cormac Murphy is. Won himself a free. Michael Warnock has to watch himself. He's booked already, and I think he's going to get a little ticking here. Or is it going to be more than a ticking? There's a pull on the jersey, and Michael Warnock 
Let's get the stern talking to. It's the second yellow card, is it? No. Uh, no, he, he was only ticked for the first one. He was only ticked yeah. for the first one. Yeah, you're right. I was thinking he was booked. You were saying he was lucky that he wasn't booked. He was lucky yeah. the first time. So look, I mean, a yellow card now, you might find that there's a change that someone else will go on, Cormac Murphy. Uh, because the way Cormac operates... You know, yeah, it was, but he was holding him. Yeah. He, he was holding him. Ah, was a tug on the jersey. Yeah. So big kick here for Shane Heaver. Hasn't scored, or haven't scored now since the 35th minute. We're now in the, the 50th minute. Shane Heaver comes forward. It's a big kick, but he has nailed it through the centre of the post. And Shane Heaver is the second point for Maher Felt in the second half, both from freeze, but it does narrow the deficit. It's Shane's second of the game. So a big score that for Maher Felt. That's a good kick out from Conlon Bradley to find Kieran McFall. He fists it away back here. I'm not sure who that was for, but Ryan Dukin says it's mine. That's Michael Warnock. It's caught high there. And the referee says it's a free out. He takes it quickly, but a dangerous game there, Paul. You took a deep breath. Yeah, well, I mean, just it's just dangerous play when you're going across if that ball had a spill. Right. And, I mean, there were shouts for two longs, but it was certainly high around the neck, so the free went to Warnock and they got the advantage. So Connor Glass just waits for Conlon Bradley to come up. To gather possession and Conlon, Conlon makes a mad dash forward to take Danny Haver away so that leaves plenty of space for Conlon Bradley to keep running into him which he's doing so and he's still going he's still going as Conlon Bradley he's going to have a he's go he's going to have a pop he is going to have a pop and he is going to have a pop oh why not Conlon Bradley pops it over the bar but that was made by Conor Glass because he took Danny Heaver away. It left all the space of the day for Conor Bradley. He just kept going, and then it was getting closer and closer, and he nailed it, Paul. And again, we were commenting in the first half that he doesn't do that. Generally, uh, Conlon comes so far and goes back, but obviously that's been a decision because he's been up over that halfway line three or four times in the second half, which he wasn't doing in the first half. So that's obviously been a tactical change as well. And look, Marker felt weren't expecting him. They were man, they were man marking, and he kept going and he kept going. And he couldn't believe his luck. And listen, what a score! What a Such score. a run, yep. and to have the conditioning to take a score, fantastic. So nine points or six points, nine minutes remaining in this the senior football championship final, live here from Celtic Park on Weir Derry and Derry GA TV. Paul McFlynn alongside me for his expert analysis on this contest down in front of us where Maher felt need to find something, need to dig deep, and Danny Heavern has a pot shot. Is that going to come in? No, it's not. And Maher felt, you can just see Paul, in the first half, they were so composed, they were spreading it around, they were working it into positions. That's a couple of shots now. I know, are the feeling that the wind is going to carry it over for them in the second half? Well, there's obviously a, an element of that, because even when they're kicking from the 45, it is going dead, so the wind is helping to carry it, but... Um, it's just as you said in the first half all their scores were coming in around the edge of the D and now they're kicking that bit further out but it's frustration you, they just feel it slipping away from them and look at this stage you really can only see one winner and um, Glenn are so composed the, the Glenn that maybe people were expecting to turn up and this man here has also turned on the burners in the second half Connor Glass this one though is across the front of the post and wide of the target from Connor. But he's been so, so much more offensive, yeah. orientated, dragging Danny Heaver and making Danny track back and work, dictating the play, whereas Danny was sort of doing that in the first half. 110 to 7. Seven minutes remain. The ball over to the far side. The miscommunication there between the two Maher fit men. It was two against one. One flicked it on, but the other one also went in for the, for the ball. The two of them got up for the same ball. And it meant the ball just trickled over the far side line. And up the far side lane comes Emmett Bradley, plays it inside to Conliff McGuckin. Conliff plays it over here to Connor Carvel coming forward. And Glenn beginning to find spaces now. And Connor Carvel fancies his chances, but this one is across the front of the post. No, it's not. It's inside the far post. And Connor Carvel gets his name on the score sheet as well. And beginning to look very easy. As the Glenn substitutes there, you got a quick glimpse of it. Look on and hold. Glenn on the way to three in a row by the looks of it. They're looking comfortable at this stage. Absolutely. I mean, that's that this right flank down in front of us here. I mean, they've had some, they've had so much joy there in, in this second half. So again, that would you would appear knowing Malachy and Ryan and the backroom team, Johnny Bradley and Michael uh, McCullough in terms of looking at the stats, they'll have seen something because of 
so many of the scores have come down this this right hand side. And then you have your goalkeeper coming up, kicking a point, followed by your corner back, such as the such as a reflection of the modern game. I just count the about the scores, nine what Glenn has. That's why I was sorry Paul, I was I was leaving you to do it. No problem. I'm talking, I was just counting up, I was confused because I hadn't Danny Taller, I was thinking Danny has scored. So I was just watching it, but the ball breaks away there. And the chance here from Maherfeld, but they're way over on the far side, very close to the, the sideline, the referee says. It was touched on the ground, so it's going to be a free out for Glenn and Maherfeld. Nothing going right for them at the moment. The track firmly Johnny, against them. They are good making a change over on the far side. In comes number 28, that is Emmett McGuckin. He was the star of the show back in oh, 2019. Good on, good and on. they need something at the moment, so I'm guessing Ryan Lennox is the man going off. We know what's coming now. It's going to be... Yeah, they're going route to one. route one, get it in. But listen, Ryan Dugan's tailor made for him, really. And but Emmett's such an experienced player. If, if anything's loosening around that edge of the square, he has an eye for getting the goal. So look, they've had to do something, but you're looking at five five coming up to five minutes of normal time, probably a cusp of injury, but we're in double scores here. And from the first end of the first half, we thought this would go to to the wire. Glenn have up the ante big time all over the pitch from 1 to 15 subs that have come in there's just been an age to them that wasn't there in the first half and I'd love to have been a fly on the wall with Malachy because he doesn't normally raise it the tempo but he can and when he does it's, it's usually effective and it's, it's, it's worked here today so free out here to Colin Bradley right in the corner so it's going to be tough to get it out of there but they have done so and that's an easy free giveaway by Evan McGuckin because Glenn were in trouble Paul in the last I'm sure that frustrates Damien Barton and Brian McGuckin to give away a simple free to let them out of there yeah it's just a rush of the blood I suppose it's Emmett's first action he wanted to get stuck in but I mean it's it's a difficult place to get out of that corner and you'd like to bottle him up try and try and turn it over but it's an easy one and look it just suits Glenn it's you know it's killing time it's killing momentum and we we'll see Orla Gallagher over there your physio, of course, got married last weekend, yeah. so I wasn't sure she was going to be here the day I was she away on honeymoon. So obviously delayed the honeymoon, possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like he's got a, he's got a crack in the leg, possibly a dead leg there came out of it. So Emmett tackled him, and then someone followed up. But look, this will sit. This will certainly sit. Um, Just running down the clock and taking the sting out of the game. Marafat have made another change. That looks like Fergus Duffin from my distance that I see that has come in there. I'm not sure who's gone off, but I think it's Fergus Duffin that has definitely come in. For Maharaj Felt and Giuseppe Lapari. You see there the flags, the wind blowing. But Glenn looked like they're on the way to Trinidad Road and join the likes of Banbury, Balahi, and Slotney that have done so before. The latest, of course, was Slotney doing it four in a row. 2014 to 2017. Balahi have done it on a couple of occasions, I think. Um, maybe more than a two or three occasions they've done it and I think Ballanderry have done it definitely on two occasions as well. So Ballanderry did it there recently 2011, 2012, 2013. Yeah, and then Marfa, or Slotnil come did then and done four the four in a row. row yeah. Yeah. So Glenn hoping to make history themselves to make three in a row and bring the John McLaughlin Cup back to Mahara again this evening. As here comes Ethan Doherty lays it off to Connor Glass and Glenn will try to run down the last three minutes or so and they will do so. Maherfeld still although they're pushing a little bit there's no real urgency in Maherfeld. I think they're deciding that this is not going to be their day as they try to work their way back into the contest but against last year's all Ireland runners up and the current Ulster champions that is not easy done because Glenn are so comfortable in possession Jack Doherty has had a very good second half there's a beautiful ball in there for the player coming through who got no nope, touched on the ground says the referee Danny yeah, McDermott. Danny McDermott yeah. I can tell you, Paul, you're relieved from picking a player of the match today because that will be done by the official officials over on the far side for the official player of the match this afternoon for this final. But I'm sure there's a lot of contenders in there and Danny McDermott gets a strong hand, or Jody McDermott, the brother, gets a strong hand in there to dispossess that one and turn that one over and the winner free out. But there's been a lot of contenders for player of the match. Yeah, thank God I don't have to pick it, actually. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. it, it wouldn't be uh, easy. There's been a lot in no. the second half in particular for Glenn. And I think, really, if you're going in the first half performance, I mean, it had to be Unimal Hold. Mm -hmm. He's probably in a quieter second half. He's just about to get the ball now, actually. Um, but he's been very, very good. And he'll certainly be in the running. As well, I think, Emmett Bradley. He's had a big big game in the middle of the field. A couple of points. Um, this man on the ball at the minute, Michael Warnock, has a storm in second half. It's a beautiful ball up there to 
to Jody. Jody juggles with it, but Gareth's position, I'm sure his father, Roger, is looking on. Former winner, of course, with Scotstown. And here's another man who yeah. had a big call. He's been excellent throughout. Yeah, he's had a real strong game, probably Glenn really the consistent. He's coming in here and he's hauled yeah. to the ground. The referee says a free in. And he's been really consistent right yeah, through. Throughout the game. You know, even when they were struggling in the first half. And Connor Glass has picked it up in the second half. Um, Connor Carvel has picked it up in the second half. Kieran McFall has picked it up in the second half. So look, listen. And there's no doubt, Paul, the loss of Ford Lynch was absolutely massive for the half We can't take that away. They were playing so well at the stage and he was he was involved in so much. It was a huge loss for them. Uh, colossal. And I think, you know, it's easy to say, oh, it's hard to know how it would go, but certainly the loss of him at that period allowed Glenn, I think, to get a couple of points. And they, they had party going out at half time. On top of that then, and whilst he's done well, Conor McLaren at times, Glenn have really sewn up his kick out in the second half they turned over so many kickouts in that second half and you know, look it's just three in a row. yeah it's three in a row for for Glenn three minutes injury time the uh, Glenn supporters I see down here to my right hand side Paul if we look down are ready to come on the youngsters of Glenn yeah they're ready they're ready to greet their heroes and that's what they are because they you can see what it means to the young people of Glen. And there's another. Years. His, he's been brilliant in the second Ryan half, Brian Dugan. I mean, literally. It's hard to say who hasn't been good for Glen in the second half, while Maher felt just simply had no answers in the second half. No answers. And I mean, when it's when a team gets on top of you like Glen and you're trying to close the gap, there's no better team to play and keep ball uh, than Glen because they're so comfortable on the ball. 1 to 25. Actually, there's no one that you would look at when they've got the ball, you'd think your heart's in your mouth. Stevie that sort of phrase, Stevie O'Hara, yeah, great working, player John. too. Keep so, you know, it's the depth that they have as well. Everybody knows the system so well. They're so well coached. This man back, back as well. Yeah. Here, McFall, back in the fray. Yeah. And he drops a ball in there. And it's well taken there by Jeff Darden. And he's at some second half. Superb catch. Mark. I think it was a free on a mark. Combine the two of them. If the Glen support get ready to come on to savour another magical moha super super score. Jack Darty take a bound. Look at that the score. I mean I could see him doing it. He wouldn't do that if you were a point or two up. But I could just see him there. uh Kieran McFall and Emmett were both calling for the ball behind him shouting JD, but such as his confidence in that second half, what a score. You know? Very familiar score than the last two county finals, but yeah, look, I mean, tells me right they conceded seven points in the last two county finals. I'm yeah, nearly yeah. sure, and they scored around the same total. That's cut out again by Spike. Spike Michael has been superb in the second half. Michael Warnock, he never let you down. No. Glenn are coming towards the end of claiming a third successive John McLaughlin Cup. The green and gold ribbons will be on, the red and white ones will be taken off. And Glenn are going to be crowned champions yet again. And on the second half performance, they've been excellent. People have said they haven't turned up in the championship so far. But they've won every game, Paul. Yeah, look, that's the thing. And people, I mean, this time last year, they got into the final, people were tipping Slock Neil to beat them. And we were all thinking it was going to be really, a really close game. We thought this was going to be close. But look, they such is the, such is the, and I think, people say oh, but such is the quality of Malachi O'Rourke and Ryan Porter Johnny Bradley Michael McCullough Ronan McKenna uh, Steady McGuckin all those men I mean they just they know how to peak and it's getting them right for the you would wonder right. when you look at it why do people doubt them as the final whistle goes it is three in a row and you can see the support coming from the sidelines Glenn have made history again it's three in a row for the Waddy Grahams comfortable in the end they are five points apiece at half time but Glenn in the second half had all the answers and Maher felt simply had none and they were well and truly beaten in the end but I was asking you there Paul why do people doubt this Glenn team? well I didn't doubt them I no, don't think there is uh, people that is yeah, has doubted them I think it's just because they, they saunter through and but people when you look at the semi-final coming into this game I said that the Slock Neil game would, would be the makings of them in terms of th that, that was a real ding dong battle a game that Slock Neil actually could have won they had chances and to get through that in the manner in which they got through it I mean it sets you up really really well uh, for a final but look 
it's it's disappointing for Macker felt they will feel they haven't done themselves justice if we're going in the first half you know to me they were the better side in the first half we have talked at length about the, the loss of Warren Lynch I don't think it can be underestimated at all probably will not be talked about in a few years time but it certainly had a massive bearing in that game but for that team to do, go and see Warren Lynch and Connor Glass and an embrace there county teammates such as the respect between them we're disappointed for Owen that we didn't get to see more of him because he was having such a great game. Um, but look, what can you say about this Glen team that hasn't been said about them before? They're three in a row, Derry Senior Champions, they're current Ulster Club Champions, and they will celebrate for a day or two, and then they will set their sights firmly on Cargan here in two weeks' time, and they will want another crack at Ulster and indeed beyond. They will indeed, and you can see what it means to the supporters again. The green flares have been lit yet again, like it was for the intermediate like it was last year. Celtic Park belonged to the green and gold. Glen Ullen and Glen crowd champions. Now, I know Malachi O'Rourke and, and Ryan Porter and Johnny Bradley and the boys, they would never have been thinking of Ulster. They were always, like it's one step at a time. They had to retain their county title, but now all eyes will be on that Ulster title and retain on that Ulster title. But Cargan, they struggled last year against them for long periods. They did, and listen, I just uh, before I came up here, <laughs> I was chatting to Roland Devon, the current uh, Cargan uh, manager, a uh, member of his backroom team, and Kevin Doyle with him. So, look, I actually recognised a couple of Cargan lads here as well. So, look, uh, there'll not be a, a Cargan period, hasn't been physically here in Celtic Park, but they are watching it on the stream. So, look, they will feel after last year game, I think it was maybe a two point win for Glenn. And it's here in Celtic Park, as far as I'm aware, in two weeks' time. And listen, for Glen now to celebrate Cargan over an extra week or so in terms of prep. Um, Cargan are a good side. Aren't they, aren't they, aren't they, aren't they <laughs> so here? Aren't they here? They'll, uh, they'll be wanting to come out and put one over in Glen from last year, but this Glen team, you know, I think they feel they've unfinished business in terms of an All Ireland series, but Maliki will not let that creep into their head as he talks about, and it's a cliche, but it's true, they'll take each game as it comes, and that'll be a battle for them in two weeks' time. Well, well, Paul McFlynn, thank you so much yet again, not just for today, but over the championship. Hopefully, wherever you are in the world, you enjoyed it as much as this and Paul. Maybe if you're a Maher fan supporter, you didn't. But County Final Day, it's a special, special occasion. And today, it belongs to the Waddy Graves Glen for the third year in succession. They won it on a very familiar scoreline because in 2020, when they, or 2021, when they made the breakthrough, it was 113 to 7 points. Last year, it was 112 to 7 points. And today, it's 113 to 7 points. So in the three county finals, they've conceded just 7 points. Thank you again, Paul. And thank you wherever you are in the world. But hopefully you stay tuned, because we will have reaction from the winning camp, as well as an all-important presentation of the Player of the Match Award and the John McLaughlin Cup. But for now, we'll hand down to the pitch side, where you'll see more reaction and the presentation of the cup to the winning captain but for myself Alan Gunn and Paul McFlynn it's goodbye for now but we'll join you very shortly again from pitch side with some after match reaction
Yes, I'm joined now by the winning manager at Maliki O'Rourke. Maliki, congratulations, three in a row, special feeling. Yeah, it is, there's, there's no doubt. Uh, it's, it's a very tough thing to do in Derry and it's, it's hard to win one championship uh, and then to, to get three in a row is brilliant and it's, look, it's, it's uh, all credit to the players there put in a brilliant second half performance. Uh, we struggled to get into the game a wee bit in the first half, even though we were playing with the win. We knew at half time that we had to dig in and, and, and produce a, a big performance second half and just delayed we were able to do that. Paul McFlynn said in the, up in the co-commentary he'd love to have been a fly on the wall in the dressing room at half-time to hear what you had to say, but obviously whatever you said, it worked. Well, no, look at it, not so much that, but uh, no, we, we just knew that, that, that uh, 
uh, you know, a, a number of things where we were sort of playing the game on, on uh, their terms. We hit the first half, obviously, Oren Lynch going off uh, helped us a wee bit as well. But uh, we were just, you know, finding it a wee bit hard to deal with that at times. And, and uh, when we didn't use the ball well going down the field, it, it allowed them to have a bout of possession then. And, and, and so things that's way, there was a few wee things that we had to try and uh, tease out at half time. But the, the main thing was that the, the boys just had to up their performance levels and, and delighted they did. And all around the field, we just went to, a, to a, I suppose, a, a different level. Level and, and that's what that's what uh, goes through in the end. You just touched on it there, or Lynch going off for them because he was so much involved when they built up the five points to two advantage, and a key player like them was a huge loss, not just for his kickouts, but he's always a player that comes forward and adds that extra to extra player for them in the attack. That's right, yeah, and, and it was and it was something that we were going to have to deal with, and uh, uh, the, the replacement goalkeeper came in and did well as well, and uh, uh, I think it was partly Owen going off and partly the fact that, that we stepped it up. I think in the second half, you know, we, we knew. We had to, and I think we were just tighter all over the field, and we were, we, you know, the uh, we were, you know, in, in contact. We were better. We, you know, we were we were scrambling better for each other. We 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 were winning the difficult balls and things like that. So uh, it was a combination of things, and uh, it, it it resulted in a much better performance. Again, that second half performance. Once you begin to click, teams did. They don't seem to have the answer to stop you. The big players all stood up. I was talking there, and co commentary Connor Class really got stuck in the second half. Michael Warnock drove forward. I think he was involved in three points in a row. He was fouled for one. He played it off to Conliff McGuckian, and then he was involved again in the next one. Big players stood up when it mattered in that second half. Yeah, well, that's it. And that, if, if you want to win, Andy, you, you need your big players uh, uh, stand up for you. And uh, the boys certainly did that in the, in the second half. And uh, you know, that's it. Uh, you can you can talk all you want. You can do this and that. But but at the end of the day, it, it's it's players imposing themselves on the game and taking the game by the scruff of the neck. And we're delighted we have so many fellas to to, to, to do that. You know, and here, look at you know, it's, it's always difficult to, to to win it twice and then to come back in. You you know, a third time to try and win it, and Marafelt had been going very well, so we knew it was going to be a battle. Just delighted for the boys with the the the, the efforts they put in all year, and then to come out with a second half like that, it was very pleasing, and, and uh, just just uh, great to get the the third in a row. You'll enjoy this. The lads will enjoy this. But two weeks down the line, you're back here against Carrigan, a team you played last year. It's now all about retaining the Ulster title. But first hurdle, you have to get over Carrigan. That's right. No, and that's it. And look, we 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 just we go game by game, and that's what we did throughout the whole of Derry and you can you can never look further than Derry because it, it's so competitive uh, and Cargan last year you know without without uh, you know <laughs> betraying any secrets Cargan were very unlucky not to beat us last year it, it went right down the way they had a, a you know a couple of weeks to sit back and watch us they're preparing well for it so it's it's going to be another battle as all those club championship matches are so look at we'll, we'll, we'll enjoy a few nights and, and then we'll get down to work for that and, and hopefully we can produce a good performance we've been building a statue of you yet in Mahara well, I don't know about that. The, the statue can be built, they can be tossed very quick as well. So, no, we'll, we'll just enjoy it for what it is. Look at it, as I say, it's, it's, it's the, the fellas around me in the background team, Ryan and Mickey and, and, and Johnny and, and, and the whole club and, and the whole players, look at it. it they do the work and it, 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 it's brilliant when it gets rewarded, I guess. Maliki, thank you very much indeed. We will get a couple of reactions, hopefully, with a couple of the players now. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back very shortly. <laughs> Welcome back and delighted now to be joined by two winning Glen men, the team captain Connor Carvel and our player of the match, Unit Mulholland. Connor, I'm going to come to you first. Three times you've lifted the JML. Is this even more special than the first two? This is very special. Um, look, there's a lot of hurt there from 2019 um, with Marfelt. Uh, we always wanted another crack at them in the final. We were delighted when, when the final pairing was, was made and um, we really wanted to do ourselves justice and, and right the wrongs that we felt we had left um, in 2019 and show that we'd really learnt that day. We felt like it was a really big lesson for us and we probably wouldn't have pushed on after it without learning those lessons. So um, it's a right saying that you have to lose one to win one and um, I, we were, it was very sweet to, to beat Marfeld today. Interesting to hear that, Connor, because you've won two since that day, but still that hurt still was in there. Oh, serious. Um, that luck will take 2019 to our graves with us. Uh, you remember the ones you lost probably more than the ones you won, but um, I, we just wanted to really do ourselves justice today. Um, and we said that at half time, we probably hadn't done ourselves justice up that stage and we really wanted to work hard in the second half. And thankfully everything came together for us. And 
Um, you know, things are going well when the likes of Goose are kicking points. <laughs> <laughs> You were hanging in a little bit there in the first half. The man beside you probably kept you in it in the first half. He kicked three superb points in the opening half. Maher felt probably the better team in the opening period. Would you agree? Uh, probably. Look, um, Maher felt we're coming with runners. And I don't know, we just... We were a bit slack in the first half now. We've probably not got to the place where we want to be this year yet. Um, and we've been disappointed with our, a couple of our performances. And, um, yep, this man probably can't say that though he's been top class for us all year he's uh he he does that week in week out uh, at training he keeps everybody on their toes and that's a pleasure to play with him and uh i delighted for him the man of the match today just before we get a word with you and you're going to bring this cup back home you see what it means to the glen people <laughs> you are all now legends among all these young people for glen and to come onto the pitch to celebrate with you and i think it means as much to to them as to use and for you to see the smiles on the young people's faces ah look we don't feel like legends we uh I, we, we're just so proud to represent the people of Glen. you know it's a, it's a great club to be part of um the way everybody ties in together and look it's just moving in the one direction and um i we're just delighted to represent them and i hope they enjoy the celebrations and uh because they they earned it as much as we have if you just hand the mic over there to Yunan. Yunan, congratulations. Player of the match, a superb performance. Hi. Um, no, I suppose you don't really care too much about getting man of the match as long as we get over the line there today. I don't really care who gets man of the match, but only care if man get man of the match as long as we get over the line. But uh, uh, it's, it's nice to probably pick it up too. Like. <laughs> Must have been shared words in that dressing room at half time, I suppose. Was there a lot of thinking, like disappointment among yourselves of how you played in that first half uh, more than anything? There wasn't any real stern words. We, we knew ourselves. We weren't yeah. We weren't really at it, but we came out in the second half, sort of went to town in their kick outs, got a good squeeze on it. We knew after Lynch went off that we could maybe put a bit of pressure on their keeper, obviously not their regular keeper. We got a good squeeze on it and we got that sort of that goal and the point. Quickly went four up from level and we just were fit to control the control the ball from there and play it sort of on our own terms. Big brothers getting used to score these goals in county finals. Hi, um I don't know. Uh, <laughs> He's, ju uh, he's just he's just finding himself in the right place at the right time. He probably couldn't have missed it. But uh, no, I can't really say anything. That one I missed in the first half. It was brutal. On a moment, the keeper and got tackled, but it doesn't matter now. It doesn't matter, is right. And you go on now into Ulster. You have to retain that title now, but I spoke to Maliki earlier on. It's one game at a time, and you have to get over Carrigan first before you worry about anything else. Yep. Whenever you're thinking about, or whenever you're sitting on Derry, and you're playing the likes of Slaniel two weeks ago, you've seen what that was like. Mar felt today. We knew that was going to be a battle too. You can't take your, you can't, be, you're not looking at Carrigan, you know, before the day. But we'll, we'll, we'll start to think about Carrigan now, maybe after a couple of days. But uh, we've seen, seen the battle we had with them last year. Um, they're a great team. But they're dominating in, in Antrim, and just that's our next test, and just have to start getting ready for it. Congratulations, boys. Cheers, Bring the JML back to Glen again for the third successive year. So that brings the curtain down on our championship coverage here on We Are Derry and Derry GA TV. It's a day for the green and gold, yet again like it was last year here in Celtic Park. Glen Allen were crowned intermediate champions. And there now you saw the Waddy Graham's Glen lifting the JML for the third successive year. A massive congratulations to all the Just Content team, We Are Derry team and Derry GA TV. To the Derry County Board for giving us the opportunity to stream these games live for all you people at home or abroad that couldn't be here to savour the moment among the supporters that made their way here to Celtic Park. It was an absolute pleasure, as always, for myself, Alan Gunn, to be involved. And to all my co-commentators throughout the year, thank you so much to Hugh McGrath and Paul McFlynn today. But again, to Connor and all the Just Content team, a huge thank you for having me involved and to Stephen Barker and all the county board, to John Keenan, the county chairman, and all of Derry County Board, thank you so much. So hopefully, wherever you were, you enjoyed our coverage here of the Derry Football Championship and Hurland Championship, where we crowned the champions for 2023. The latest of them is Glen. They will go on now and represent the county in the Ulster campaign. But again, from myself, Alan Gunn, and all the team here on Derry GA TV, thank you and good night from Celtic Park.